Psalm 15, verse number 4. In whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord, he who swears to his own hurt and does not change. Remember, Psalm 15 starts with a question, who will abide in the presence of the Lord? Who will be in the tabernacle of the Lord? So the contemplation here is that of a person who experiences the presence of God at all times. Very different from the priests of the Old Testament who go to the temple and come back and don't stay there forever. David is asking, what must I do to always feel the presence of God wherever I am, in my home, at church, in the office? What kind of behavior should I put up if I want to sense God's presence with me at all times? So that's what he's leading us through. And here he's talking about two things that two more things that we should be doing and he says we should honor what God honors he says uh, that in our eyes a vile person should not be honored what does that mean in, in other words you don't take somebody who is really doing the wrong thing and make him your hero somebody who is despising God uh, and yet you 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 approve of the person you know in our current celebrity age where all of us love people uh, on social media, on TV. Uh, we, we create heroes out of people whose lives are very questionable. And sometimes if you take a look at the people you, you admire and the people you, you think are your heroes, sometimes you quote them, you look at their lifestyle, sometimes they are very godless people, people who blaspheme against the name of the Lord. Uh, but, but these vile people, unfortunately, uh, we honor them. So God says, if you want to really uh, enjoy my presence, you have to honor what I honor. If somebody's life doesn't please God, even if the person is your hero, you cannot uh, just honor the person because uh, you like uh, something they do. So as believers in Christ, we must honor the people and things that God honors. We must be selective about what we approve of. And then it says, not only must we honor what God honors, we must honor our word. Some very strong instructions here. And it says that even when you speak or you give your word, you make a promise, and you realize that uh, fulfilling the promise will hurt you, you still have to go ahead and fulfill your promise. That, that means your word must be a very serious thing to give. I guess it is so because God himself takes his word seriously. God's word is important. He created all things by his word. And he created us in his image. That means our words must also be important to us. Our word is part of our personality. When we say, I will do it, it's important. When you say, I will be there, it's important. And so here the passage says, if you really want to please God, you have to honor your word. You have to honor your word. Now, that's not always easy because there are certain times that you may give your word, you may give a promise and find it very difficult to keep it. In those circumstances, you have to be honest. And if you have to apologize, you apologize. But don't ever take it for granted. I said I'll do it. I didn't do it. And it doesn't matter. It matters, especially with our children. For those of us who have young children, that we have to keep our word. To our spouses, we have to keep our word. To our, our friends and our colleagues, we have to keep our word. Can you imagine a world where everybody keeps his word or her word? What a, what a glorious place it will be if we all say things, we mean them, and we do them. And the passage says that's what we should be aiming at. And I trust each one of us would endeavor to make our words count for something. Let's pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, help me to live in honor before you, to hate what you hate and love what you love. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I'll catch you again. I'm Pastor Mensah Otabel. Shalom, peace, and life to you.